This is Sandra Goodwin from Maple Stars and Stripes, your French-Canadian genealogy podcast, and this is part two of the four-part series on using the printed PRDH for your French-Canadian research. If you have not yet viewed part one, I'd suggest you do so before viewing this video as each video builds on the previous one. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use the indexes to more easily locate the information you need. As a review, in Part 1, we saw how the 47 volumes are actually grouped together in five different sections. Each group had its own index as the last one, two, or three volumes of the grouping. So the first grouping consisted of volumes 1 through 7, with the index in volume 7. The second grouping consisted of volumes 8 to 17, with the indexes in the last two volumes. And so it continued. Within each volume, each parish or record group, such as a census, also had its own index. As we know, in genealogy we always work backwards from the known to the unknown. So you do the same thing with these volumes. First, you have to have researched the family far enough back in time to have reached the 1765 cutoff date. Then you have two choices. If you know the parish the record is located in, you can go directly to the index at the end of that parish's records. Or if you know you're looking for an event that took place between 1750 and 1765, you can search the index in volumes 43 to 45 for information from the volumes that cover that period. If you don't find your ancestor there, don't forget to check the index in volume 47 for the supplemental records found in volumes 46 and 47. Then decide whether you're looking for a baptism, marriage, or burial record. Now before we take a look at how to use the indexes, we're going to first take a look at some of the abbreviations that you'll come across as you use these volumes. First, we have the basic abbreviations, but yet abbreviations that are sometimes confused by the beginner. A beginner often thinks that the abbreviation B stands for birth, but it stands for the French word baptême, which is baptism. The French word for birth is naissance, so birth is abbreviated with an N. Mariage for marriage is fairly simple, and the abbreviation is M. We mostly see an S at the end of a person's life, but that does not signify death, but rather burial, which in French is sepulture. D is used for the abbreviation for death, which is décès in French. Other less common abbreviations known as the document codes found in the printed PRDH are the following. A for abjuration, abjuration which as I explained in part one, was a renunciation of one's Protestant faith. C for a confirmation list. H for the sick list from the various hôpital or hospitals. L for the list of migrants. Now just to confuse everyone, N for a marriage contract, even though N is also used as the abbreviation for birth, this N indicates that the record was drawn up by a notary, which applies to marriage contracts. R for a census, because the French word for census is recensement and Z for a marriage annulment. Keep these in mind as we look at the various records in parts 3 and 4. Remember that there are a couple of useful tools on the front and back inside covers. We saw how the inside back cover has a list of parishes and the volumes in which they appear. In the inside front cover of each volume is a map of the parishes, again with each parish having the same numerical designation throughout the volumes. This map also shows the parishes divided up between the three governmental divisions of Quebec, Trois-Rivières, and Montreal, with insets for the two congested areas of Quebec and Montreal. Now here is a typical parish index page. Notice that the surnames are in bold print, followed by the given names for that surname found in that parish. If you see a given name with many events after it, it does not mean that those are all the same person. For example, these are all the Francois Parises found in these records, but until we dive into the records, we can't be sure how many individual people are included in this list. This index is for parish number 451, Notre Dame de Quebec. Now let's take a close-up look at one surname, the Paquets. 
The first column is obviously for given names. Sometimes instead of a given name you'll see a series of dots as the first name in the list. It could be an unnamed child or because every person mentioned in a record is included in the PRDH entry, it could be the name of the priest who signed several of the records with his surname only. The second column reveals the type of event, baptism, B, marriage, M, or burial, S. Next comes the date of the event, followed by a column that only has an entry in it if there was more than one event type that took place on that date in that parish. The number tells you the order in which this event appeared for that date. If there was only one baptism on a given date, there will be no number. If there is a second baptism on that date, you will see the symbol followed by a 1 and so on. So Marianne's baptism with the number 1 in the next to the last column means that her record was the second baptism for December 7, 1698, and Renée's was the third burial on May 9, 1699. The last column tells us what position the person held in the record. So for Maria Anne Paquet, she was person number one, the first person mentioned in the record or the person who was baptized. Now let's take a look at the general index located at the end of a group of volumes and compare it with the parish index. On the left is the general index, typical of an index from the end of one of the five volume groupings. On the right is an example from a parish index. If we compare the entries for the same person, Anne Badeau, we can see that they are exactly alike except for one item. In each index, her surname is in bold print, centered. After her given name is a B indicating that she appears in a baptism record. However, it doesn't have to be her very own baptism. The 465 that comes next is the numerical designation for the parish in which the baptism took place. The inside back cover tells us that parish number 465 is Charlebourg. Next comes the date of the baptism, which took place in 1700, the second month, February, the third day. The next 03 refers to Anne's position in the baptism record, which we'll look at in an upcoming slide. The general index on the left has one extra number, which is the number of the volume in which you'll find the record, volume 46. We'll take a more in-depth look at Anne's record shortly. When you follow the index to a page of records, you look chronologically for the parish number first, then for type of record, then for date. You will find headings like this one. This page is from the parish of Notre Dame de Quebec, which has the parish numerical designation of 451. This is a page of marriages with a document code of M for mariage. This first complete record is a marriage between René Boutet and Marie Madeleine Luce, which took place on February 26, 1691. This was the second marriage for that date indicated by this symbol in the numeral 1. Records are presented chronologically by date, so this is an advantage of the PRDH volumes. It is easy to see, for example, if your ancestor might have died during an epidemic when many people from that parish died in a short period of time. It is very useful for social issues. Now let's return to Anne Badeau, involved in a baptismal event on February 3, 1700, in Charlebourg. The record is found in Volume 46, so in Volume 46 we find that the parishes are in numerical order. We flip through until we reach parish number 465, St. Charles de Charlebourg. Baptism records appear first. We next search the dates on the page, which are in order until we find February 3, 1700. There we see that Anne Badeau is the third person mentioned in the record, so we have the correct one. Now let's move to the record itself. First we learn that this record was Tire des Archives Civiles, or taken from the Civil Archives. So this is from a copy of the original parish register, with all that entails. The first date is the date of baptism, represented by the B. 
The second is the birth date, represented by the N. In this example, they are the same, but that will not always be the case. Jean-Baptiste Babo, person number one, is the baptized child. Person number one in a baptism will always be the baptized person. The father, person number two, is Simon Babo. After his name, it says Père de One, or father of person number one. Our subject, Anne Badeau, the mother of Jean-Baptiste, is person number three, as indicated in the index. It stipulates that she is Mère de one, zero one, or mother of person number one. And that is how we proceed from the index to the actual record. Don't forget to go to maplestarsandstripes.com slash newsletter to get your copy of the key to the repertory, the English translation of the instructions for how to use the PRDH. The key and these videos should have you whipping through the printed PRDH in no time. To learn more about all three PRDH formats, go to my podcast and show notes for the PRDH episode at maplestarsandstripes.com slash 26. In part three of these videos, we'll look at how to read entries for baptisms, marriages, and burials. Please join us for part three of using the printed PRDH for your French-Canadian research.